Erasmus popped back onto the radar a few weeks ago, and live and well by the all indications, and, which is good because I was worried about the kid in all honesty because I think he can still be reached with the continued application of reason and patience. He informed me that he wouldn't be doing a direct response to part two of my What is Evolution, which was disappointing, but he did decide to watch both parts of that and anything else related to him so we could make a 100 questions list directed at me specifically. And yes, due to the difficulty of filming on screen because of a certain five-year-old, I'm going to be transferring to a hybrid form of recording, primarily with my avatar. Probably a 70-30 kind of split, but we'll see what happens. I'm kind of excited to see what he had. Let's see what we've got. Hello, how are you doing today? Pretty good. A little sore from work, but nothing helps that like whiskey and Motrin. I hope things are good on your end. I'm doing this blind, by the way. Well, the script, anyway. I prefer to get my thoughts down so they make more sense and I don't ramble or pause too much. Do you believe that everything you believe to be true is definitely true? That depends on what we're talking about. As it pertains to the shape of the Earth, the age of the universe, and evolutionary biology in particular, a few things you hold a difference of opinion on, then yes, and I can prove that those things are definitely true. If we're talking about something like the origin of the universe or the existence of a god, however, the positions I have on those matters aren't as solid, so to speak. I accept that the universe had a beginning, but make no claim that I know what caused it. As it pertains to the existence of a god, my position on that is that I do not believe any gods exist, but I will entertain evidence indicating otherwise. That said, the burden of proof you need to meet will be high. Do you believe that everything I believe to be true is definitely false? Again, that depends on what we're talking about. My last answer covers that for the most part, but here I would add that I don't know what you believe on everything. We've only discussed a few things. Do you believe if we disagree on something that I simply misunderstand the subject and am either uninformed or misinformed? Once again, this depends on what we're talking about. You do seem to be uninformed or misinformed on what we've discussed so far, but I can attribute a lot of that to the inexperience of youth and misunderstanding of key points. I've warned you before about making beliefs part of your identity and what that can do. Do you believe that my beliefs are nonsense? Not gonna lie, bud, a lot of what we've discussed and what you believe I do see as nonsense, yes. You don't see it that way, which is why I've invested more time into trying to help you. Unlike my coverage of professional apologists, my goal with you is to teach you. Professional apologists make money lying to and misleading people like you. I won't reach them, but I think I can help you. Why are you in a spaceship? <laughs> I've always had an interest in aeronautics and aerospace, all the way back when I was a kid. So I picked that background because I would like to live on a space station that can support people long term. Do you feel that teaching children about creationism is child abuse? I feel that depriving children of factual information is wrong. Since creationism in a lot of households is pushed from an early age with no scientific education even attempted, it can and does lead to people denying the efficacy of science when it literally saves lives every day. That's why there is a concerning rise in anti-vaxxers in particular. I do not consider encouraging a simple belief in God to be child abuse per se, so long as it is understood that the stories in the Bible are at best allegories, not to be taken literally. I do view pushing the Bible or any religion for that matter as literally true to be tantamount to child abuse, though. Do you believe in freedom of speech? Yes. I'm a Marine who defended your right to it. Why do you get so angry when I call it evolution? I don't get angry at that. If I did, you would know. I am frustrated because it isn't a word and is a distorted view of the actual science. At best, it's poisoning the well for people who don't know the topic. Nothing about evolution is evil, though I think I'll be explaining that in more detail soon. Do you believe evolution is a force of nature, like gravity? Not a force like gravity, no. Evolution is a process of biology, working for the survivability of a population of organisms in the struggle for life. A biological arms race. For instance, there's a newt, I think, that has extremely high levels of a neurotoxin that it secretes and is potentially deadly to humans. It has this level of toxicity because the garter snake eats it. 
but it has a high enough tolerance to tank it most of the time so the defenses on both sides get progressively stronger as the generations progress. How can you possibly believe birds are dinosaurs? Because they are, and I've shown you evidence to that effect. A clear progression from non-avian dinosaurs to what we know as birds. Morphology, embryology, and fossil transitions bear this out. I would be happy to go into more detail if you want. This is one of many things I can teach you about, but you have to be willing to consider the position first. Are you aware a whale's pelvis actually serves a function? Yes, I am. This is one of those points where the definition of something isn't what you think it is. A vestige is something that is diminished in its original capacity or has been repurposed for another function. The pelvis of the whale has been repurposed pretty much solely for reproduction, but that is not the primary function of that structure. The original function of the pelvis is to support the weight of something on land. This function was lost in whales when they became ocean-bound. The evolution of whales is well documented, actually. One of the best documented around. Something I will elaborate on if you want, but again, you need to be willing to consider the position first. Why do you reject the evidence for an intelligent designer? Because there is no evidence of a designer, which is the first step. After that, we can discuss what it designed. Further, there's quite a lot that points to a haphazard design, which was evidently not designed by an intelligent being. Processes like photosynthesis, which are way more complicated than they need to be. Structures like uh, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve show an unguided process building on what was already there. Things like that don't indicate intelligence. They indicate either evolution or an incompetent designer, quite frankly. When it comes to comparing DNA between humans and chimps, why do you choose the percentage that more aligns with what you already want to believe? As I've explained before, it doesn't matter what percentage you look at in scientific literature. The percentages are very close and indicate relatedness in the same way that you are 96 to 98% similar to a very distant relative. This isn't about what I want to believe, bud. If you want to show me that humans and apes are not related, then you need to do one of two things. Explain why we have broken ape and monkey genes in our DNA, like the presence of MYH16, which I've mentioned to you before, or find me one morphological character trait that adheres to the rules of classification that separates man and ape. Remember that Linnaeus posited this same challenge in his day, and it was never answered legitimately. Do you only look for evidence that confirms what you already believe? No, of course not. That would be dishonest. Regardless of what I want to believe, I'm compelled to accept what the evidence indicates, absent of any emotional compulsion. We're 15 in, and for the most part, these are good questions so far. They either are ex expanding on points that I've made in the past, or are follow-ups. So, let's keep going. Do you believe you are susceptible to confirmation bias, or that you are too smart for that? Of course I'm susceptible to confirmation bias. We all are. However, since I'm aware of that, it makes it easier to avoid it. I've changed my mind before, and likely will do so again. I don't know everything, bud. Do you believe all creationists outright reject evidence and deny science? No. Most I've interacted with have. Very few have interacted with me on scientific topics as much as you have, which is actually a good sign. It shows me that you are in some sense curious and actually want to learn. Most will have blocked me by now, even if I'm polite. Do you believe it is impossible to build a wooden ship as big as the Ark as described in Genesis? Yes, I do. The physical limitations of wood from any species of tree cannot take the strain of the forces that would have been imparted to it. The Ark would have been smashed to splinters. If yes, how can you possibly make that claim? Again, the tensile strength of wood of any species precludes such a thing. Oak, cedar, pine, etc. No single species or combination of wood from different species would withstand even a fraction of the forces subjected to the Ark. That's why we build with steel now. Have you ever built a ship before? No, I haven't, but if the best shipwrights in the world couldn't build one even half the size of the Ark and couldn't keep it floating without pumps to get the water out of it constantly because it was leaking all the time, then it's a pretty good bet that the Ark couldn't have been seaworthy even in calm waters. I've been in open ocean. Just sitting in the water causes twisting and bending on even steel vessels, though it is minimal because of the strength of the material. Do you have any credentials in shipbuilding? 
Nope. Do you? Have you ever been on a boat large enough to carry aircraft? I have. One reason I'm familiar with the forces involved. How can you claim that Adam and Eve couldn't have enough genetic diversity to propagate the human race when you don't even know what their DNA was like? Because on the macroscopic scale of multicellular organisms, you must have a viable population density to prevent outright extinction due to a lack of genetic diversity. That whole idea about them being preloaded with such diversity is frankly impossible and does not bear out in the study of genetics at all. The fact is that such a small genetic pool would be unsustainable. This is another one of those complicated subjects that I can discuss more in depth if you want. How can you reject Adam and Eve and believe in a common ancestor at the same time? You need to understand the difference between a common ancestor and the common population that ancestor came from. We can trace our ancestry back to a series of mitochondrial Eves and Y chromosome Adams, but they were still part of larger populations. It's just that their genetic lineages follow through into modern day. Not that there was one man and one woman, and both mitochondrial Eves and Y chromosome Adams were separated by literally generations. Why do you use profanity? Because I'm a grown-ass man, and these are the words generally used to apply emphasis to ideas and thoughts. It's my personality, reinforced by life in the South and as a United States Marine. Do you believe if something has evidence, it can't be a religion? Examples. Evolutionism. Atheism. Etc. Yes. I feel compelled to remind you that you think so as well, based on the definition of religion that you provided me in one of the first videos I did on you. I do need to point out that your example of evolution is misplaced. Not because it's a religion, far from it actually. This I think is an unintentional false equivalence and false dichotomy on your part. Atheism is simply being unconvinced on the claim of a god existing. Nothing more. It isn't a religion because my position isn't based on faith. Bear in mind that I'm talking about myself here, but as a rule, atheism isn't faith-based. It's a position of being unconvinced. As I've pointed out before, evolution is not a religion in any sense of the word, primarily because it is not faith-based. It's evidence-based. We're a quarter of the way through here, and we're still looking pretty good. What's next? If yes, would that mean that creationism and Christianity are not religions? No, creationism and Christianity both are religious because neither is based in evidence and both can only be believed on faith. I know you don't think that's the case, but we're working on that. Is everything that is religious by definition false? Yes, since no religion can provide evidence supporting their position on several key points common to all religions, they are at best wrong and at worst false, which in this context are essentially the same thing. What exactly is proto-life? I think this is in response to my videos on 100 questions for evolutionists. Proto-life would be the precursors to what we recognize as life today. Cellular structures, much simpler than today, but that meet all seven criteria for life. Do you believe fancy charts and pretty cartoons are proof of evolution? <sighs> no kid. Those charts are part of the evidence described in scientific literature and simplified in many cases for ease of understanding. Cartoons are 99.9% .9 of the time inaccurate because of oversimplification. I find this question insulting really. Do you think I'm less knowledgeable than a five-year-old? Do you feel you can understand the complexity of a single cell? Yes, I do. Do you feel you can understand the complexity of the human mind? That depends entirely on what you're talking about, but within the ability of someone who isn't a neurologist and understands that the mind is a product of the brain, yes. Do you feel you can understand the complexity of the entire universe? What do you mean by that? Are we talking about the formation of stars, planets, galaxies, superclusters, or something like the origin of the universe? Outside of the origin of the universe, it isn't terribly complex, really. What do you know of Neanderthals? Another species of human. Far more diverse than we are, with significant differences in brain size and body mass across the species, it seems like we won out over them because of our social structure, primarily. There's a bit more to it than that, of course. Where is your evidence that Neanderthals were a different species of human? Genetics, primarily. They lived close enough to contemporary humans that we know the markers they would leave. 
Strictly speaking, they were a subspecies of human, if memory serves. More akin to a, a breed of humans than a distinct species. Do you believe human beings and Neanderthals could interbreed? Yes, that's borne out in genetics, though, but appears to be a rare occurrence overall. If yes, wouldn't that mean they are the same kind as humans? Define kind, then we'll talk about this. Do you believe alien life existing on another planet would prove evolution? I'm not sure where to go with this, but yes? If yes, wouldn't that make the topic of alien life relevant in the discussion of evolution? It would. We would be able to study how life diversified on another world, leading to a better understanding of the theory. Contrary to what you may think, it wouldn't be anything contrary to the theory. In fact, it's to be expected. Where is your evidence that hyenas are cats? And this is another question which is based on my response to 100 questions for evolutionists. I didn't say hyenas were cats. I said they are genetically more closely related to cats or felidae than dogs or canidae. In fact, I think my answer to that question was that they are neither cats or dogs, merely more closely related to cats. Do you believe Nazis were Christians? Yes, they were. If yes, where is your evidence? History, quotations pertaining to the religious beliefs, Christian iconography, and language on said memorabilia. They were Christian, bub. Hitler himself was a Catholic. Do you believe the KKK were Christians? They were and are, yes. If yes, where is your evidence? Let's take a look. So you think this is what a good Christian man does? Yeah, this is our Christianity. I mean, that's just plain and simple. Black people and white people are nowhere related. In my opinion, I think black people evolved from animals. And I believe that we need to be separated. Whites and blacks need to be separate. Who decreed that? God decreed that. Jesus decreed that. Seems pretty clear to me. Were you aware that the Nazis were actually atheists? No, they were not. That is a lie you are propagating because of ignorance. We've already covered that. Were you aware that the KKK were actually committed liberal Democrats and atheists? That's horrifyingly ignorant. The Klan is far from liberal or Democrat. They are about as far removed as you can get and are, by their own admission, conservative and predominantly Republicans. Add to that the fact they are exclusively creationist Christians, and you couldn't be more wrong here, kid. Since you admit that humans are not herbivores, are you willing to publicly denounce vegetarianism and veganism? Hell no. I'm neither one, but if it works for you, go for it. We're omnivores, and it is possible, though more difficult sometimes, to get your caloric and nutritional needs from those diets. And if it works for you, I don't have a problem. Since you believe animals can feel pain, how can you ethically eat animals knowing they suffered and died in order for you to eat them? Because the pain was minimal and I can and do appreciate the fact that they died to ensure my continued existence. Don't misunderstand this. We've been killing animals as a species since before the dawn of civilization. This is a fact of life, and I appreciate the loss of life to keep me going. Since you believe animals can feel pain, how can you support any animal testing that may cause them pain? As I have stated before, frivolous testing for hairspray or cosmetics is not something I think is necessary. Testing for the efficacy of medicine or vaccines, however, is something I can get on board with since it benefits us as a whole and potentially the animals we are experimenting on. I don't think it should be done needlessly. Do you believe humans are more important than animals? This is context and culture dependent, but no, I don't place more importance on humans versus animal lives. Culturally, cattle are food. They've been put in that role by us, and I will eat them if I need to in order to survive. As I said, I appreciate the loss of life needed to do that. Why are you against compromise with people you disagree with? If by compromise you mean teaching fantasy as if it were fact, as in the shape of the earth or creationism, then it isn't because I disagree with you. It's because objective reality disagrees with you. You don't get to say your beliefs are as valid as factual information if you don't have facts to support it. I consider that lying, and I will not compromise with liars. Well, with that, we're halfway through. We'll pick up the rest of it next time. Until then, 